guys, my name is Ismaus, and today I wanted to show you how to use Ambergent to create epic simulations that you can import in Blender. So Blender simulation has its own uh, smoke simulator, but it can sometimes be very, very slow to simulate anything. So using a standalone smoke simulator like Ambergent that does real-time a smoke simulation can be very, very useful and very, very efficient. So let's uh, look at how we can use uh, Ambergent and uh, use it to import a smoke simulations for blender so if you want to download ambergen uh, there is a free trial on their website uh, so you can just uh, do a quick google search uh, for ambergen i'll be leaving a link in the description so that you can go directly there uh, just add in an email and uh, start your own free trial so that you can test it out and uh, see how you can use it so let's uh, get started uh, with this you can also see some of their demos they have the most coolest uh, demos you will ever find yeah so for any small simulator so and uh, this is real time as well so you can really see uh, what you're getting as you're working so let's get into blender and uh, see what we can do so the first thing i'm going to add is uh, i'm going to use a uh, suzanne head here you can export whatever you want to emit the smoke from as an fbx uh, file then export that and then in ambergen uh, so the, the Amazon view UI is uh, split in two different sections. Uh, like Blender, uh, you have the node editor. This is going to allow you to tell Amazon how to simulate the smoke using different nodes. And uh, each node here, you, each node you click will give you the different settings for all parameters for that specific nodes. And uh, here, and uh, this is your timeline. And uh, here is your viewport authority view area. So if you hit play, you can see the simulation. Uh, simulating. Let's uh, see how to import in the mesh. So to, file, to start a new project, you just go under File, New Preset, and uh, I don't have to save this one. And I'll just give you this basic setup uh, with different nodes. Uh, if you're using Blender, if you want to export into Blender, the only nodes you want to you you care about are the nodes, uh, the simulation node, uh, emitter, and the shape. These, these are the three nodes you want to. You care about maybe the export node as well because this is going to allow you to export uh, the vdb file that blender imports as well so the, everything else here is just to help you preview your small in the viewport and the ambergen uh, viewport here so let's import in our shape and you can see that uh, our emitter uh, takes in a shape uh, we have some primitives uh, that come with ambergen uh, if you want to do that you can change the primitive to whatever you want uh, here and uh, you can see that uh, the emitter will be updated uh, to render that smoke remember this is all real time so you can see the final or the or whatever you're simulating directly uh, in real time as you're changing our uh, different parameters here uh, you can also animate uh, this and um, uh, whatever you whatever mesh or emitter you have here you can also change are uh, you not only restricted to meshes or primitives you can also uh, use particles uh, for that so let's add that or you can just drag a node uh, aligned from the from the input and then then you can get out uh, something here so let's add in some particles here and then you can play around with different parameters uh, if you want that you can already see that uh, we have some uh, particles jetting out of uh, the, the emitter there so we can increase the pass change the size pool and uh, if you want to reset your simulation you can hit R or use uh, these uh, points here you can see now we have some particles jetting out of our scene but uh, we want to replace uh, this cube uh, with, our main, with our own Suzanne head so I'm just going to delete this cube uh, we still have the particles let me reset the simulation by hitting R let's see we have our particles now emitting the uh, the smoke but uh, let's add in the shape so we can drag from the shape input here and uh, find the mesh input and when you select the mesh, you can see all these parameters here. All we want to do is select open mesh and uh, we should navigate to our mesh. So I called mine three. I'll just select that and uh, it should be able to reset this. It should be able to work. Uh, sometimes it might take a few seconds to work. Uh, remember, this is still um, in beta. You can see this is still better. So sometimes I found that uh, it may not work right away. So we might have to tweak a few things here. And, uh, maybe first disable this, put it back. Let's see, let me get rid of this. Uh, reset. Let's try adding the primitive again and see if that will give us 
that gives us something. So this is an head should also give us something. Uh, I'm just going to save and reopen this. See if, uh, if that will help. Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, after reopening, uh, it works fine. Uh, uh, this is, uh, remember this is still in beta, so you might have a few issues uh, with it, but uh, I may just have to restart the project to get everything working as you want. Uh, we can also add in forces if, if you want, you just have to drag and uh, something like here and uh, put in whatever you want. Let's see, let's use a point force. I can see all the parameters you, want, you have here, you can increase. see how uh, that is affecting uh, the Alice mob and you can see that uh, this also has a bounding box like uh, the blender smoke simulation and uh, if you want to preview the bounding box you just see just add show bounds and I should see where the smoke is being simulated uh, within uh, let me just bring this around here center like that and, uh, I don't know, let me just get rid of that force and that delete the force you just have to delete it from the up uh, from the uh, point here i'm going to scale down the suzanne head by selecting the mesh here and uh, reducing uh the scale of it just a bit so that we're not going too outside uh the bounding box and uh, this is what we have uh, for now there are quite a few forces here so if you want to play with those you can uh, add those as well and see how that uh, Going to affect your simulation. I uh, can also, uh, in the, can see also the mesh itself, uh, the emitter itself takes a force, so you can add that there as well to see how that is going to uh, behave. Now I think uh, this is good enough for the demonstration we want here. So I'm just going to export. I'm just going to show you how to export this. And uh, if you click on the simulations, you can see the different settings you have. Uh, for the simulation. I'm not going to go into those uh, so much because you can just experiment to see what you get. Uh, for now, let's just go to the export VDB so that we can export this into Blender. Uh, the first thing you want to do after you click on the export VDB, you want to select where you want uh, the VDB files to go. So I'm just going to create a new folder here. We just call it 34. And uh, I need to, to name what you want, uh, the file, and uh, then you can export. I uh, name the timeline uh, how long the timeline is going to be let me just pause this for a second uh, we just give it a 250 frames are uh, like uh, the length of the blender timeline before timeline so let's uh, export this by hitting export if you look at uh, the export parameters you have these export types these are going to be your uh, attributes uh, your small attributes or fire attributes in blender uh, so let me first pause this uh, for seconds a second so you have the export density temperature fuel uh, this is going to come up in your uh, in blender as attributes uh, that you can use for uh, for your volume shader so let's also export uh, the temperature fuel uh, velocity and uh, I think uh, that's it low so let's uh, export this again Course, this is a, going to be a bit slower than before because now we're exporting more data than before so okay now after exporting this all you have to do is go into blender and then use shift a to add a vdb file under volume import or open vdb and then navigate to your vdb file where you have exported the data then import that into blender you can see what we have but uh, if we add a suzanne head uh, for comparison you can see that uh, this is a bit too large so I'm just going to scale it down and fit the size. And let me just go to around here. Just move that into space like that. And then I can get rid of this Susan head. And uh, if we play back, you can see how the smoke looks. Uh, so we can add, we can go to the materials and uh, start working on this. And let me just switch to Eevee uh, for faster previews and uh, look at how this looks so let's add a principal volume and uh, now these these are uh, 
export types that you see here that we added in are uh, these attributes uh, that we can use uh, for our principal volume to control how uh, our fire looks or how our fire our smoke looks i'm going to add um, a sun let me just see add a sun for lighting here and uh, one thing that you will notice is that uh, the smoke here doesn't really look like what we have simulated here and that the reason for that is that uh, we exported only what is before the simulation part and uh, what makes this smoke uh, look like this is everything after uh, the simulation uh, so since we don't since we didn't export anything after this uh, the simulation node we have to set up everything after the simulation node ourselves in blender so to do that uh, this is the process so use the principal volume and uh, if you want to use uh, the frames the flames uh, all we have to do and see you can even just click on these to see how each of these uh, looks how the velocity density uh, flames and then fuel uh, temperature so let's use the fuel here so shift a let's go and input attribute i uh, want to use the flames now we can use this as you can use this as a, a fact you can use this factor as the black body intensity and see how that looks and, uh, if this is too strong what we can do, do is uh uh, make sure that uh, the attribute name matches whatever you're using here so otherwise it won't work so we just use a math node here uh, to control the strength of this now it seems that uh, the frame flames might be a uh, the black body intensity is a bit strong so let's just use uh, the emission strength here let's see now you can see that uh, we're starting to see something that when we increase this we can see uh, uh, this increasing as well so now we just have to control the color here if we feed this directly into the color we don't really get much so we can use our color ramp here convert color ramp uh, to see you can see that uh, we're already getting something there Now, if we multiply this, let's just use a fire color. And, uh, everything looks blocky right now because our volume settings is uh, using a very high size tile size so we can reduce that to get even better looking results but uh, this is also going to increase your computation power so uh, you need a iffy pc to do this uh, you can also increase your viewport uh, samples uh, to make uh, things look even much better so you can control uh, the color of the file you want here and uh, uh, the smoke itself looks a bit too flat uh, for now because uh, we don't have volume uh, shadows turned on so if we turn that on uh, we should get better looking results i'm just going to increase this to 10 uh, so that i can see that uh, now the sun is affecting our smoke as well so just increase this let me first get rid of this uh, sky so that uh, can see uh, the fire much more clearly now all you left with is uh, exporting this and uh, you should be able and uh, everything we have set up here we have set it up in Eevee but uh, it should also work uh, 
easily in cycles as well so you can see what we have there yes so that's how you can use ambergen to create simulations and and uh, that's it thank you for watching i'll see you in the next video Thank you.